And then we've got to test out this heat pump and see how long it takes to heat this water up to 35 degrees Celsius. So I'll just run the experiment and show you what my findings are. Starting at 16.7 degrees C. So in 7 minutes and 31 seconds we got the temperature up to 35.8, well 36 roughly. So it seems quite powerful um, and I'll go and do some uh, calculations and try and figure out how powerful it actually is. It was consuming about 700 watts on average. Um, the compressor itself is just a bit warm really. It's, it seems to be coating. Not too bad. I would have thought with the water being quite hot that it wouldn't have coped at all. But um, let's try. I didn't need a fan on the evaporator at all. It's working brilliantly just with the wind going through it. It doesn't need any fans at all. And it doesn't seem to be icing up at all. It seems to be getting very cold but no ice. There's maybe just a little bit of ice occasionally forms around here um, when the wind stops blowing but uh, it's working really well. We got a nice cold breeze sitting behind it. We're up to 900 watts now, so um, that's with the water just being that hot. The hot tub operates at 40 degrees Celsius and it cuts off, so this is just basically a test just to see if the compressor can cope with that. Um, a 40 degrees C condensing temperature. Well, it'll actually be slightly higher than that due to inefficiency in the heat exchanger, but, well, the condenser, which I have doubled the size of. But there's a, a heck of a heat coming off it. That's absolutely boiling coming off there. It's almost up to 40 degrees C anyway. I think it might work okay for helping the hot tub heater. The water coming out the other end of that tube is just really hot, it's, it's really nice. 914 watts. I think we're pushing this compressor a bit hard now. Well, it isn't getting too hot, so it seems to be doing not too bad. Really, I think I'm running the evaporator a bit too warm on this, um, or this compressor is not designed for this application. Really, a big Tecumseh compressor is what I'm needing. I think the one horsepower ones, it could go to negative five in the evaporator. This one, no, sorry, they can run an evaporator at minus five. Um, whereas this one, no, I'll start again. Uh, the other compressors you get, um, the big one horsepower ones, they can run their evaporators at five degrees C, but I think the coldest, well, the warmest you're allowed to run an evaporator with this compressor is just uh, minus five, which I'm not sure is ideal for an air source heat pump application. So I'm just going to clean it out with some nice uh, clean tap water because I think there was oil com coming from somewhere, maybe out the hoses. So I'm going to give that a good jet through first. So here I am over at the hot tub. Uh, it's running quite well. I've uh, restricted the needle valve a bit um, because the evaporator temperature was a bit high so now we're beginning to get a little bit of frost formation and it's dropped the power consumption of the compressor a little bit. The compressor is just nice and warm to the touch, it's not really a problem. Um, I'll try and get a temperature measurement of the water coming out here but uh, it's pretty hot. So the temperature of the water coming out of the heat pump is currently 43.2 degrees Celsius and I'll just get the temperature of the water going in. Well the temperature of the water going in is just 35 um, according to this thing. But I find that the temperature and that just tends to jump about all the time. Uh, it doesn't seem to know what it's doing. Let's see. It seems to be about roughly 38, 37 in the hot tub. So the whole evaporator is actually um, pretty much freezing up now. It's frozen up right back to the compressor so I can maybe a little bit more refrigerant flow. If I open it up fully you'll probably notice that all that frost will disappear. So 
it seems that my capillary tube hybrid system is working quite nicely. I think it's, it's just a metre of 1.2 millimetre capillary tubing. Quite big stuff. I'm surprised that, I'm surprised that um, the compressor is actually coping with this application because it's just not designed for this. Seems to be working too, it seems to be working really well. All I need to do is implement an over temperature cutoff protection on the compressor and maybe some sort of temperature sensor on the uh, liquid return here. So when that say maybe gets up to 50 degrees C, like due to a pump failure or whatever, uh, I'll cut off. Because uh, if you have no cooling on the condenser and the thing keeps going, uh, there's a possibility that, I don't know, the compressor will most likely will just get destroyed or maybe the filter dryer would explode, maybe if the, pr the pressure got too high. It's quite unlikely though, I would think. The hot tub heater was on a timer and it came on just a few minutes ago. Um, and I can't really make up its mind what the temperature is. Um, well, it, it just says 39 now, so if this thing is right, then that means that it will start at 35, that, that all that heating has just come from this. So it's done quite well. It's been about two or so hours. I've only used 2.17 kilowatt hours here, so that's uh, not too bad. Uh, there's a heck of a lot of water in there, and to, to heat it. Just using that heat pump, um, I'm really quite impressed. It's worked a lot better than I thought it would. It would work even better if I had maybe just a slow fan on the air heat exchanger there. But um, it's coped with it, no problem. It's probably, and the compressor's probably not getting hot because there is no fan on this heat exchanger. It's just relying mainly on the wind when it blows. And it's just a little bit warm. It's doing quite well. And I reckon that when when we first fill this and uh, just from the tap and the water and it's really cold, the whole thing will probably just frost up. But um, I've changed the configuration around. I've actually got um, a pump for each heat exchanger there and two sets of hoses, and that's working a little bit better. It's bringing the condensing temperature down. Well, the return liquid here, before it, uh, it was really hot, I couldn't really keep my hand on it that well, but now it's fine. The discharge is still absolutely roasting. You can see all the uh, fog that comes off it when the wind blows. Okay, here are the results of the test that I've done at the start of the video. I heated up 12 litres of water, and the temperature rise that I calculated was 19.3 from the start temperature to the finished temperature. And uh, based on that, the time I said 7 minutes and 31 seconds, that was the closest time I could get, so... That has given out approximately 2.21 kilo kilowatts of heat. Um, I'm not sure if that's quite right. Um, I wouldn't have thought so, um, because if it was, then that would imply that it's a very efficient system. Um, really efficient indeed, actually, considering it was, um, at times it was only consuming about 800 watts and it went up to 1,000 when the wind blew through the evaporator but I think when I was using it to heat the hot tub it was actually less efficient because there wasn't as much wind getting through it because it was sitting right on the ground in a sheltered area 